the boss special for here with Coach Greg Gear at the Mercer Bears down the road in Macon, Georgia. Their coach, I think it's down down the road, down the road there on 16, 14, 16 for you guys, man. Doing well. We uh, appreciate you having me on, Jr. And and uh, we're excited. We we seem to be getting things going, and and hopefully going to start our season. We got everything scheduled, and just going to try to be as diligent and as flexible as possible. Um, but uh, we're we're excited where that we're going to get started November twenty fifth. Most definitely, coaches over a week away. So I'm gonna ask you, uh, let's go back to March when everything kind of shut down. Like I told you all my birthday was March 11th. Everything kind of went haywire on my birthday. So how has life been treating you guys since March, going from on campus to virtual learning and having the guys be away from you and, and your staff? So how did it all go for you guys? It, it really has gone pretty well. We have a great administration here with President Underwood. Uh, and then our athletic director, Jim Cole. I mean, they have done everything possible to try to keep things going uh, and not taking any days off and, and trying to work and, and doing everything they can for our student athletes to make sure they're safe and testing wise and just uh, very diligent in what we've done since March. It was disappointing because we finished the year pretty good. Uh, we had an invite to the college basketball insiders tournament, postseason tournament. Uh, so I wanted, we wanted to keep playing. Uh, but obviously we had to stop, and uh, so we, we, we were excited about that opportunity. Now we got another one, and we got to make the most of it. But our guys have done a great job just being flexible. You have to. You can't get too, too, uh, too high and too low just because it changes daily. Academically, Coach, you know, I know your assistant coaches, academic advisors really played a big role in your young men going from on campus learning to being virtual because I know for me it would be hard from being in front of a teacher to going on my own when I'm in my own house, you know, in my own, own surroundings and having to go to school. So how is that keeping your young men engaged academically over the spring semester with the, with the staff, academic advisors, and your assistant coaches as well? Yeah, you know, that is a that is a great question because it, it, it's uh, everybody thinks, oh, okay, I'm going to go online. Virtual learning is going to be easier. Some guys can handle it. Some guys can't. Uh, and we found that towards March and the end of that semester, we found out who had trouble with it and who uh, was capable of handling on on their own and with our advisement. So uh, it kind of was good. In, in a way, it helped us this summer knowing okay he really struggled last month of classes everything being online so we need to do something a little bit different or we need to have more hours of study we need to have more hours you know of of us making sure you know that the student athletes doing what they're doing so in that sense it really helped us figure out who can do it who can't and you just you just have to uh you know it's more hands-on like you have to be constantly every hour figuring out, okay, because we, what we do is we have an academic advisor here, but we also have our coaches take three or four guys each, and they're responsible for their academics and knowing what's going on, what they got coming up. So we've got a couple things that we also do. So it was, even though we weren't doing basketball stuff, we still had a lot of time to make sure academically they're still okay. Now, Coach, I keep the young men in semi-shape. How was it trying to give them, send them exercises to do in their own environments? Uh, you know, some of them can't go out here and there. And a lot of guys in the roster from Atlanta here, so we, I, we, I know this kind of was kind of open. That was, that was okay. But for guys who wasn't in the Atlanta area on the roster, how was that? It, you just hopefully there's some trust there. I mean, human nature is you're not going to do – you're not going to do – most people aren't going to do what everything they're supposed to do unless there's a coach around or a trainer or someone else. Uh, that's pushing them. Uh, so it was, it was one of those things where do what you can do. Uh, I wasn't going to get too bent out of shape with it just because it was, we, we still have a long time to go at that time. And so I just want to make sure everybody was mentally safe and, and, and still okay. And, um, you know, not, we would give them some exercises where they could do outside. It was almost like you went back to some old school, you know, working outside doing, you know, plot jumps and just, not all this new equipment. You, we kind of had to go back in time a little bit and, and make them understand, hey, this, this is kind of like the old school where we had to do it. You got that right, Coach. And, you know, I know for me, you know, I have a walkway around my house here in Stockbridge, and I have a, I have a hoop out back. So if I ain't looking to have a hoop out back and a walkway in the yard, do it in the yard. So I know it has kind of be like, okay, 
guys, there's some old school tricks here. That, that, hey, the old tricks don't go, go don't go bad, Coach. Ever, man, I'm glad this young gun guys can see that back in, the, in the, you and our day, it still works for them good. Oh, no question. What what? And I know, and I know Herschel Walker was. He was uh, blessed with a lot of ability, God-given ability. But what he always the only did it was push-ups and sit-ups, and he, he didn't have a whole lot of weights, is what I've been told and reading about him. You know, so there you can still get strong by doing just the basic stuff, uh, and that's what we had kind of had to go back to, just because we weren't, they didn't have access to all that other than you know the new equipment, the weights, and all that kind of stuff. Now, Coach, four is uh, you know as ramp the guys back up. Um, how have you kind of approached that? Because you don't want to have a guy have a nagging knee, hamstring, ankle, growing all year long. Because when you've been inactive since March to back to now, you know, you asking for an injury. So uh, how has that been kind of keep you guys ramped up as you get ready for November 25th here, come up here in a week, week and eight? Uh, yeah, you, you, again, I, I don't say this all the time. That's another valid point and another good question just because, um, you know, as coaches you'd like to have – everything routine you kind of got things planned out but with this you you really couldn't plan too much um and so you had to be pretty flexible and and you had to be able to we're starting later so from an anxiety coaching wise you're like well we gotta we gotta just ramp this up and get going and 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 you had to kind of take a back seat a little bit and take a breath and understand hey they haven't done this in a long time uh, there's no reason to jump right into it. Let's slowly get him involved. And, and our AD did a great job. And just when we all did get back to school, like not just, hey, full go now. We, we had to follow policies and protocol uh, and just kind of slowly get things back in line, somewhat of a routine. Uh, but there were still enough days to be able to get in shape. Um, you know, you never are in the best shape you can be in when you start a season, no matter what season it is. Um, so you just can't lose your mind and think, oh, I'm two weeks behind. We got to do this. We got to do that. Uh, it's going to get in, and we're, we're, we're well on our way to getting everything we need to get in. And, and now it's just a matter of uh, what's difficult is we haven't played against anybody else. Usually by now we've had a couple of scrimmages against other teams, uh, exhibition games. Uh, and, and that's just nobody has that opportunity this year. So it's going to be interesting the first few games just to, you know, see how guys react when the, when the popcorn's popping and the lights are on. Coach Davis, my next point, because, you know, trying to figure out your rotation, how long guys play, maybe I could play more than you would usually would play, and also maybe going more basic than you want to go because, you know, having to kind of – measure it out you can't really put everything you want to put in you know so how can i imagine the headache trying to figure out how how, how much guys play how much i put in how much i give them because they haven't done anything in a long time and i want to overwhelm my guys especially the guys who are new on the roster yeah you, you can't get too caught up in trying to get so much in like you just got to stay to basics uh, the most successful guys in in you know in sports they do the fundamentals they do the basics at a very high level so as a coach, you got to make sure we have to try to make sure that we're just, you know, playing hard, playing with a lot of energy, playing together. Um, and we're going to make some mistakes, but, you know, we, we got to move on to the next play and not worry about if we if, did we execute this right or that right. Yeah, it's great to do that. But right now, I think our, our main concern is just playing as hard as you can, getting in great shape uh, and and staying fundamentally sound and doing the fundamentals because that, that can take you a long ways. And then as you start playing, then you can, then we can start wrinkling some things in and out. Oh, definitely, Coach. I, I mean, just thinking about it from, from – I was like, man, I just – I, 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 I feel for you guys, you know, kind of trying to get young men to, you know, learn the system and get them going and keep them healthy. I mean, this is going to be the year of all years where it just – Hey, playing hard may get you over the line this year for sure. You know, <laughs> forget talent, but it's playing hard. That's talent in itself. We may get a lot of gospel wins this year for sure. Well, that gives you a chance. You know, if, you, if you're doing that at a high level, it gives you a great chance to, to be able to compete against guys. Uh, and then now you, you just got to be able to – it goes in any sport. When you turn the ball over and give the other team more chances, you're probably going to lose. Uh, so, you know, if we don't know as much as we need to know, let's just try to keep possession of that basketball and get us a good shot or a good possession. Um, but, it, you know, we, we can sit here, yeah, everybody's dealing with the same deal, same situation. 
we've got to be thankful that we're about to play uh, and, and that we're, you know, still going to have a season. And, yeah, there's going to be some probably some games suspended or postponed or canceled. We just got to roll with it. And if someone down if – we, if we get canceled and Georgia Southern, you know, is able to play, then, hey, let's play them twice. We're playing them once right now, but it might be where I call Brian and say, hey, what do you got Saturday? Can you play? I mean, it's just going to be a very different type of year. Uh, and that's – we just got to be flexible. I saw you playing tech as well, so. Yeah, yeah, we, we uh, are going up there on the 27th uh, to play them. It's a great uh, – they're going to have a really good team. And, and Josh, we really appreciate, uh, you know, those guys playing us and putting on the, putting us on the schedule. Uh, I just want to get us ready for our SOCON conference. And they, without question, they're going to get they're, – they're going to give us a good dose and give us use, you know, get us ready to play. Most definitely, and like you said, Coach, you like I said, for us in Georgia here, you know, it ain't like it's not strict as these other places. So, how's it been trying to schedule games during states like that? There are different rules in each state. So, how is it another, another wild card been trying to make sure you get games the right way with places that have different rules than we do here in Georgia? It, it does. That's why we felt like let's make a decision to play as many teams as we can in Georgia. Uh, and we've got Georgia State twice. We got Georgia Southern. We got Kennesaw State, Georgia Tech. Uh, we're playing North Georgia, Middle Georgia, uh, and then uh, Georgia Southwestern University. You know, so we just it, – it, it, we were fortunate because there are a lot of schools in Georgia that, that said they would play, and, and so I think we were all in the same boat. But it's pr- pr- pretty fortunate to be able to have that many schools in the state and to be able to, you know, come into an agreement where, hey, let, let's do this. Oh, definitely, because, hey, <laughs> I talk a lot of coaches from Georgia, of course, on the show, because that's like, you I have a lot of content because you guys got so many schools here in Georgia. A lot of content talk to you guys, man, so it's good for me as a radio host for sure. <laughs> no question, no question. But, yeah, it, it's – it's uh, our, our scheduling was not – yeah, we had to fill in some gaps, but, again, uh, it, we everybody kind of did a pretty good job. Because I've talked to a lot of coaches – two or three weeks ago, they still had to get five, six, seven games. Uh, so, you know, we're pretty fortunate to have had ours done here for a few weeks. And your conference, too, a lot of your trips in the conference are my bus trips. You know, you're ready to get on a plane. So that's nothing. So, so con is good in that regard, too, because all of it is you can just take a heck of a good bus trip there and not worry about having to fly through the airport because, you know, that can cause trouble as well with this virus we have going around us here. Yeah, no question. That was one thing. Uh, just wanted to get as many, well, all bus trips. Uh, we weren't going to get in the airport and get on the plane and, and just put ourselves in that situation. Uh, so bus trips were good, and I, I don't mind. Everybody's got phones. Everybody's got headphones. They got These buses are pretty nice now where you can watch movies. You can watch whatever you want. So uh, it's, it's still not a bad life. Oh, definitely, Coach. And also, man, just, man, uh, uh, how did you guys kind of approach recruiting via Zoom did this time around? I know you, you guys like to be meet me players in person, the famous in person. How was it getting a lot of guys via Zoom who may have never met you before, but they saw you on Zoom and say, hey, I'm going to come play for, come, come play for Coach Gary because I, I, I like him and the staff there. Yeah, it, it's, uh, every, again, everybody was dealing with the same situation. And, and so the, the fortunate thing is we had two scholarships for the 21 class. Uh, and we got two signees that signed early for us, so we're already done with the 21 class. Uh, but, yeah, we had to come up with uh, innovative and creative ways to, you know, to Zoom, and it's not much different than people FaceTiming. You know, they FaceTime's been going on for a while, so uh, just bringing them virtually, br- taking them through campus. Uh, the good thing about our <clears throat> signees, and I think this is probably true throughout the country, those guys had already been on campus. They'd already been here. They're local guys from Macon, uh, so they'd been here before. So it wasn't something they haven't seen. It wasn't. Yeah, we did a Zoom with them, but they'd already been here several times. Uh, so, so recruiting wise, we're we were in really good shape there. Uh, now with the twenty two class, it it hopefully things will open up, and now we can go see them play face to face as opposed to just watching on film. Oh, yeah, I, I love coming down to Macon. I love Exit 5, Mercer University, and Zebulon Road. So, hey, I, I, I can vouch for it, too. Man, it's a great campus, Mercer has. I can vouch for it because I've been over there many a times because you're not that far from where I live at. From where I live at, it's not that far from Macon. So, yeah, great campus, people. Trust me. Go down there and check out Mercer. It's a great campus. Hey, have you, been to, have you been to the Bears' den? Not in a while. Not in a while. All right, So you, but you've been there, though. Yeah. 
All right, well, you come back through. Tell, tell me, make sure you look me up, and we'll, I'll take you to Bears Den. No doubt, Coach. I'll ask you this, Coach, before we, before we close Hey, you up. might have to take a nap now. You might have to take a nap after you get done eating there at lunch, all right? Hey, Coach, you like a little food. I love me to eat, man. <laughs> food is what I like to do. And that's how I retire from playing sports, man. Food is my thing. That's my new hobby, food. <laughs> Give me a taste sister, Coach. <laughs> Hey, I, I tell people all the way, I didn't get the, my stomach didn't get this way by looking at it. Yeah, that coach. The coach, let me ask you this, man. Uh, how did you guys uh, keep, keep your players' minds fresh, man? Because you know, when things are going, the pandemic going around us, and how did you keep their minds positive and not let the things that are going on around them bring them down? Because it's easy to let, when things are not going your way, how you think they should be, you feel like you're locked up inside your house. So how did you kind of keep the minds sharp so they won't get depressed as young men? Yeah, it is just communication. Communication and uh, understanding uh, that you are on scholarship here. You know, you came here to play basketball, get your education. Uh, this is going to pass. Uh, this is a great opportunity to be able to really, you know, concentrate on your academics, um, you know, get ahead in that regard. Uh, but it was something that, you know, it it was just so long of not being able to be together. Uh, that That's the kind of scary thing is just because, you know, you we weren't able to do a whole lot of team functions. And teams all over the country, that's how you build, build uh, leadership, culture, uh, getting to know each other is just having team functions and being able to do certain things as a team. And we just weren't able to do as many as what we wanted to. Um, so I, I think that just kind of leaves you a little worried sometimes as a coach, uh, you know, and just where everybody's really getting to know each other and you can kind of see certain guys in certain situations, know how they react and act to their teammates. Uh, but the, we, we've got really good kids, like really good kids to where uh, good parents at home and, and good people around them. Uh, you got to communicate with all those guys too. It's not, it's not any different than the recruiting process where you touch base with all those people. You got to do the same thing once they're here. And coach, you can still have done a good job of getting out to Atlanta really good. Cause you from Canton and all over the area here. So talking about how you guys kind of came in there and kind of made Atlanta a second home for you guys to get talent and bring them down to Jamaica in there. Well, I think Atlanta and the Georgia state of Georgia has some of the best talent in the country. I really, I mean, they, they are, there is abundance of talent. Uh, when I first got the job, I looked at the, but before I took it, I looked at the roster and saw there was one guy, I think, from Georgia. Uh, and I felt like we, we, we had to be able to come into Georgia, especially Atlanta being so close, uh, so many great schools there, that we, we, had to, we had to put our footprint in there and, and get to work and, and build relationships might not happen right away, but you got to continue to build relationships where you just keep getting better ones and better ones. Well, definitely, because like you said, so many talented players here, you know that the AAU programs here are very high level and high class, man. And so, you know, I've noticed it about the roster, too, before you took over. Like, I, I would always wonder, like, why wouldn't more guys from in the state of Georgia, at least Atlanta, on the Mercer's roster? Because since, if you go up my downtown, it's pretty much an hour away, you know, depending on how fast you drive a traffic going to Henry County, you know, but it's not that far away, and guys don't feel too far from home as well, coming to, down to Macon from Atlanta, so I feel like it was a great opportunity, and I'm glad you're just giving your staff taking advantage of it, because, I mean, it's going to help you all put this program out for years to come. Yeah, well, that, that that's the, hey, that's the, uh, that's the, that's what we're, that's what we're hoping happens, you know, because just, uh, again, they've got really good players, and and uh, we got to make sure we do that, continue to do that. Because, uh, again, the more you win, the better, you know, people want to come to winning programs. Uh, we've won here before, took a little bit of a hit, but now we're back on track. And, and we want to, our expectations are to win championships and get to that NCAA tournament. Oh, definitely, Coach. I think you do it, man. I'm going to definitely just keep supporting you guys. When I end, I'm coming in the making, Coach. I'm going to text you, let you know I'm on the way down there again so you can, we can go to the Bears then, man, and eat up and have a good, a good, some good times down there, man. I, I love making for sure. I love that sound. It's really easy, laid back there. I like it a lot down there. Awesome, Jared. Thank you. I appreciate it. And we'll get you, a Mer we'll get you some Mercer gear, too, so you can represent us. I sure will, Coach. Hey, I would love to wear some gear, man, anytime, buddy. All right. Thanks, Jared. Coach, be safe. We'll talk to you real soon, buddy. All right. Bye.